So obviously the, the conversation here today is built around the fact that Mike is a Trump supporter and James, you, you don't care for Trump. Yes. And, and so we're, we're just going to dig into that and see like uh, what's behind that. Uh, so if, if you, James, do you want to start with why you don't really like Trump? Yes. Yeah, so my concern, I mean, so my concern about Trump from a kind of conservative perspective. Um, so I mean, I, I'm not attacking him from the left. It's, it's kind of a critique from the right. Um, I, I have my view of conservatism is that it fundamentally should be about con- conserving what made the West great, to use a Trumpian phrase. So that's individual liberty, um, democracy, the, the kind of the fundamental core values that, that made the Western society put Western society above other um, alternatives. And I've always been very concerned about Trump's attachment to some of those core values. Um, so, I mean, for example, during his 2016 election campaign, I was very unnerved by the authoritarianism of some of what he was saying. Um, so, for example, when he repeatedly refused to concede defeat, if he was defeated, he, he, he refused to say that he would say he lost if, if he did lose. Um, the fact that even after he won, won the Electoral College vote, he still claimed that he'd been deprived of um, an outright victory by millions voting illegally. I don't think there's any evidence of that. So I, I've always been very unnerved by Trump's authoritarianism um, and by his tendency, in my view, to cuddle up to dictators. Um, and in my view, that's very much not what conservatism should be about. I think that undermines conservatism. Um, but obviously, I'd, I'd very much like to know what Mike has to say on the subject as well. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and defend everything Trump's ever said, everything Trump's ever done. Uh, I don't agree with everything anyone says or does. So I always like to preface that before I essentially defend Trump, because it's not really a defense of Trump. It's more of a defense of my values and then the way that I view American politics in my short time here. I haven't been in the world forever. You know, I don't know a whole lot about I've done my research and I've learned history, but having not experienced it for myself, I can only really go off of what's in a textbook or what I've read or through someone else's accord. With yeah. that said, uh, like that. I said, when, in 2016, you know, Obama was finishing up. I was not thrilled with Obama's presidency whatsoever, even though I voted for him twice. Yada, yada, yada. Everything happened with 2016. I don't want to rehash like the election process, but I wasn't very thrilled with either candidate. Quite frankly, I didn't choose Trump in 2016, but I wasn't a Hillary Clinton fan. I mean, we don't need to go down that road of what kind of person she is. is. I think she's one of the worst human beings on the planet. But um, after the 2016 election, I started to see the way the media went on the attack towards not only Trump and Trump supporters. Okay, so I lived in Minnesota, which is a super liberal state. I never lived in a liberal state before I moved there. And everyone hated Trump. The day after the election, people were crying. There were petitions going around work. People were talking even to me as though I hated Trump the way they did. It was very yeah. arrogant in a sense because I didn't feel any type of way after he won. I was like, oh, shoot, what's what's this mean? You know, I'm like, I guess I'll give him a chance. I've never had a Republican president as an adult, you know, as a taxpayer. So we'll see what happens. So I had a very open mind, but everyone around me seemed very closed minded. And that was my first you know, red flag to like what's going on. I thought liberals were very open minded and progressive. So then fast forward, I moved to Florida I meet nothing but Trump supporters when I moved to Florida. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought all Trump supporters were racist and he's a bigot and blah, blah, blah. So I ended up getting a MAGA hat because I'm like, I'm going to do a social experiment. If Trump is racist, if Trump supporters are racist, I'm going to go to his rally. And if I'm ever going to experience it, it's going to be in the dirty South racist Florida, right? At a Trump rally. I went to that rally and people were high fiving me complimenting me on my MAGA hat, even though they had the exact same hat on. It was just a almost a life changing experience. And I began to look more critically at the media and the media, I think, plays the biggest role in swaying public opinion, whether it's about Trump or about any random person. Right. But because the media has been on a constant tirade against this president, I think it amplifies the hatred of him because the truth of the matter is, Nobody had a problem with Donald Trump until he ran for president. That's just the truth of the matter. Okay, so that's one side of it. Now, as far as his like authoritarianism and all the stuff that you you mentioned, I can't really speak too much about his authoritarianism because the authoritarianism that I actually experience is coming from the left, whether it's the leftist media, 
the dogma of liberalism or the big tech censoring anybody with a dissenting point of view. To me, that is experiencing authoritarianism. Trump, I feel like he boasts and brag. He's braggadocious. He says a lot of stuff. He puffs his chest out, which I think is why people like him, actually, because he is not your traditional orthodox politician, if you can even call it that. He's not been like that. And so I think that's part of his appeal is just the posturing. And then also, I feel like a lot of people, and I'm not going to say you because I, you know, I, don't, I don't know you, but there are a lot of people who oppose Trump but will overlook other authoritarianism. So it's like we don't like that authoritarianism, but we're going to ignore ours. So to me, that says you just want your brand of authoritarianism, which it really can come from both sides. I just feel like everyone is hyper focused on Donald Trump when in reality, Trump is a symptom, not the problem. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, I, I completely get that. I mean, because I get more specific. So from kind of like an outside perspective and non-American perspective, I mean, I was really looking forward to having a Republican president because I, I didn't think Obama did a very good job, uh, especially in foreign policy. I thought he was very weak in defending freedom, in defending what you might call American values, um, freedom, democracy, liberty around the world. Um, I thought he allowed dictatorial states like um, Russia under Putin, um, sad, Syria under Assad, to get away with stuff they should not have been allowed to get away with. So I was really looking forward to another Republican president. Um, I was hoping we'd have someone like, you know, another Reagan who would really stand up for the free world, for the values of freedom. But obviously, instead, we ends up with Trump, who, if anything, his record, I think, is even worse than Obama in terms of kind of huddling up to um, authoritarian figures. So, I mean, this is a guy who said that he fell in love with King Jong Un who's kind of one of the most brutal dictators on the planet. And I, I just had a fundamental issue with the, the, the kind of the way he associates himself so neatly with so many ultra authoritarian figures, so many dictatorial figures. And I just think that's fundamentally anti-conservative. I don't think that's what conservatism should be about. I think it undermines the values that made the Western world great. Um, and I think at, at the time when, I mean, those of us in Europe would love, or I say some of us in Europe would love to have more American leadership. Europe is very weak. Um, we're very reliant on you guys to, to sort us out, basically. Um, at, at a time, we'd love to have more American leadership. It, it feels like Trump's stepping back from the world it, to an even greater extent than Obama did, and kind of abandoning the American role in protecting liberty and protecting democracy. And I just think that's a real shame. Um, and I think there are a lot of other Republicans who wouldn't have done that, who would have been much more assertive in defending Western values and defending American values, um, I mean, both in the United States and around the world. And I, I think that would have been more positive for everyone concerned. Yeah. No, no, it's interesting that you brought up Ronald Reagan because I wish that I were actually alive during Ronald Reagan's presidency <laughs> so that I would have something to compare Trump to, you know? The only other Republican president that I could compare him to when I was like, oh, you know, old enough to pay attention would be George Bush. Yeah. And I was still a kid. And I just remember George Bush being a neoconservative and a globalist and a warmonger. And he represented like an old brand of conservatism, which now that it's be that vacuum of conservatism is being filled with millennials and people who are more libertarian and open minded. You know, you think about like the old school evangelical closed minded, like God hates, you know, the F word, whatever, like yeah. those kind of old school, the satanic panic, those kind of conservatives, I think, are the, the boomers there. That's what they call them, boomers. They're kind of. um they're waning a little bit. And so that vacuum is being filled with a new brand of conservatism. That's why I think Trump was a necessary change agent, yeah. because when you talk about like how he's cozying up to these dictators, is he really doing that? Or is he just trying a different strategy and approach than the previous, I don't know, four to five presidents who just kicked the can down the road with Kim Jong-un? I mean, look at the historic summit he's the first president to cross the korean peninsula that's history that's going to go down in history unfortunately they're going to paint it in the history books because it's controlled by the indoctrination machine of the left they're going to paint that in history books as look at one dictator cozying up to another they're going to do it through that lens it's always something negative and disparaging when it comes to trump it doesn't matter if he cured cancer tomorrow they would say he didn't cure it six months ago what about aids that's how they view the president and I believe it's totally unfair and it's un it's so biased. So like saying, oh, he, he talks nice about Kim Jong Un. I mean, what's wrong with trying to be diplomatic? Because we were on the brink of war with North Korea when Trump came in office. And now yeah. they've all but stopped firing and testing their ICBMs. They're still shooting missiles, but 
we're no longer seeing North Korea as a direct threat to the United States. And it's because of this president taking a different approach. So when you talk about like conservatives and Trump doesn't represent what you see as conservative, I'm going to push back and say, well, the neocon uh, establishment of conservatives have conserved nothing. The left has come after our Second Amendment. They come after freedom of speech. The GOP in the United States has gone AWOL. They don't stand up to the authoritarianism of the left, the smears, yes. the libeling. Every single Republican who's run for president has been called racist. They just lay down and take it. It wasn't until Donald Trump that the Republican Party showed any resemblance of a spine where they're actually hitting back and pushing back. This is why they hate Trump, because Trump is not what they're used to. The left is a bully. I think yeah. we can all agree that there are bullies on the left, whether you're talking about in the media, entertainment, politicians, they feel violent rhetoric, and they're all hurling it at anybody who supports Trump. And so Trump it has the gall to push back against them. He's just using rhetoric. He's just trying different things. And so far, I'm liking what I see.